Good morning and welcome to Touch Base Daily. My name is Ron Foster. I did not use my outro or intro this morning. How are you all doing? Good morning. Welcome to Touch Base Daily. My name is Ron Foster and I'm touching base with you as I always do every day. And I'm so excited to be on YouTube StreamYard right now because if I was on Instagram, you would not be seeing me because Instagram, Facebook is down. So I know the people that are on the Facebook part of this, they're not probably seeing me. But if you're on Instagram, oh, well, some places in Facebook are seen. So some places are up, some places are down. But Facebook and Instagram are outing, having outage problems across the country. So here I am. I hope you guys can see me and hear me on this channel. So let me see. I don't see anyone in the comment box yet. So we'll see what's happening there. I just look to see what's going on here. Okay, keep close to the news. Okay, nothing else is going on in the news. So how are you guys doing? Welcome to Touch Base Daily. There's so much going on. Today is Super Tuesday. And not only that, we also are, today is Tip Tuesday. So today we're talking tips. We're going to be talking about capture your best angle as you try to take better pictures. You're going to talk about that today. So our Tip Tuesday is capture your best angle so that that is what we're talking about um but until we get to that let's talk some news again facebook and instagram outage across the country right now i woke up went to my instagram and said let me get loaded let me get ready let me get set because you know i'm on both instagram and facebook and you know youtube and no did not connect I was like, what's going on? What's happening? I thought I was hacked. <laughs> I was like, no, no, this cannot be happening this morning. And um, so I am so glad that I am here on YouTube. Today is one of those moments. I am thankful that I made the switch, that I transferred over, that I diversified. Can I say? You must be diversified, not only in your finances, but in your social media. <laughs> you cannot be on one platform. You cannot be in one stock. You cannot be in one Bitcoin. You cannot be in one investment. You cannot be in one of anything. You must diversify. You cannot have one job to provide everything you need. No, you must diversify. Yes. You cannot put all your eggs in one basket. So welcome for all those folks that have moved over to our YouTube channel from Instagram because today we're all here together while the rest of the country is down on Instagram. Good morning, Anthony Rowland is in the building. What's going on? Good morning, sir. And Chris Brad is in the building. How are you? And we have our wonderful Miss K Jack and G House Houston Jack is in the building. Good morning there. And we have Bryson Leach is in the building. What's up, Ron? What's up, our LP family? What's up, CQ fam? Let's get those greetings out. You know what? I did not do any marketing for the day. I, I would usually do tip marketing for Tip Tuesday. Did not do any marketing. What happened? It slipped my mind yesterday. Chrissy's in the building. Good morning. Good morning. So Unless you are a regular, you probably don't know we're on today. <laughs> AKA Just Chris 59. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for keeping me abreast of who you are, you know, as we switch from uh, our Instagram over to YouTube. Uh, I had this morning, I got up also. I had an amazing morning uh, with the Manhattan Chamber of Commerce. We had our uh, what we call virtual networking um, event. And what that is, we we meet in one room, we introduce ourselves, all the business owners, collaborators, solo entrepreneur, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, business owners, business corporate leaders. We're all in there. And then what we do is we have what's called round tables. So we will meet together and then we will do three round tables. So that means we'll address a question that affects us as business owners. And uh, so we had a good morning. 
Uh, we talked about AI, how it's influencing, how it impacts our businesses. We talked about um, how to how we how do we balance our family life with work life. And then the number one when we started out was how do we um, oh gosh, how do we um, maintain motion forward when things are slow and things are not like you know happening you know like when things are not really happening in your business what are you doing to keep uh pelling yourself forward so that was it was a good morning and obviously took a little break and here i am with you yes kelly a is in the building good morning she says to everyone lisa is in the building lisa seely is in the building speaking of miss lisa seely I'm going to have to, because she wasn't here last time I did this. I'm going to do it now. This cup is my favorite cup. It's called Big Ass Cup of Healing. And for those that don't know, um, Lisa has a page on Instagram. When it goes back up again, <laughs> Instagram is down. Uh, it, her company is called Hello Healing. And this has this is my favorite cup. It is my favorite cup. She has a bunch of selectors of cups. But this is my cup. I um I usually have a moonshine glass over here drinking from it. I know you probably some of you guys will say, why has it got that moonshine get glass? Well, today and always it's all about the big cup. So now I'm with Le I'm 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 I gotta powwow with Lisa so I can get my my own big cup. <laughs> but I'll still have her cups here too. So, but that says touch base daily on it. So we'll be doing that hopefully in the future. Um, Gary Jackson is in the building. What's going on? Good morning, Ron. Good morning, everyone. He says, okay, people are flowing in. People are flowing in. And so let's get to the news. Let's get to the news. Let's get to the news. I'll need to pop that off here so that we don't have you on there for a while. So again, Facebook is out. So we already talked about that. But today is also... Super Tuesday, get out and vote. Um, that is, I think the big chunk of the country has their primaries today. So if you are in the Democratic Party, you want to vote, who you want to vote for. Um, I think most people know that Biden is probably the number one that's going to be voted for on in the Democratic side. On the Republican side, they say Trump will probably sweep it as well. So it looks like it is heading to a two-man match of Biden and Trump. So anyway, that's what's happening on our Super. Today is Super Tuesday, so get out and vote. If you have not voted, go out and vote. Your vote matters, even if you say Biden's going to win anyway. Trump is going to win anyway. Participate. Get in the habit of participating in the democracy we live in. Yes. We must all participate all the time. Don't just wait for the presidential election. Don't wait for the, the final election. No, vote along the way. Because I guarantee you there's some other ballots on, there are other people on the ballot also in the Democrat primary and the Republican primary. So get in there, vote, become a part of the process. You are an American, vote, vote, vote. Vote. Okay, I see here. Here, let's see who's what's going on. You guys say, Chrissy, you should order so soon. Green is low in stock. Uh, is, is it a transact? Is is, is it a selling today on here? <laughs> it is a it is a badass cup. I love my. I love it. Anyway, okay, let's move moving right along in the news. Moving right along. Okay. So, for those that did not know, Supreme Court uh, unanimously rules to keep Trump on the Colorado ballot. And if you got a chance to go through some of the footage and all of the commentators from yesterday's um, ruling, man. I mean, I understand why the Supreme Court did what they did, because they wanted to have control. They, they didn't want just any one state to control the election of, pre of the presidency. But what they did neglect, what they did neglect, or what they did was they changed the Constitution. Which is the folks that are on the Supreme Court that were put in there by Trump, 
and the other Republicans always swear that they're Federalists, that they are line after line constitutional purist. But for some reason, they didn't go with that this time. And it doesn't look good as always. So I think they were in a rock and a hard place. But um, Trump really should have been taken off the ballot because he has been also by judgment, by judgment in two states that he was and he is an insurrectionist. And the Supreme Court in their summary said insurrectionist. So why did they keep him on the ballot? Again, we live in another world. So what it does remind us, though, what it does remind us is that the courts can't save us. No one can save us but our votes. We have to go out and vote in an overwhelming performance to let people know that we are not with the Republicans and we are not with Trump. We got to be out there voting in overwhelming. Oh, there can't be 100%, 100 votes difference or a couple of thousand here and there. We have to overwhelmingly perform as we vote in this election year. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, I was so mad to hear that. So we have to vote even more now. There we go. Lisa just said it. I, she just, I, she's repeating what I, well, I'm repeating what she said because she got it to the board faster. We have to vote, folks. We have to vote. The Supreme Court is not here to save us. They changed the Constitution by saying in their clause, that the only way this function be, can be, you know, first of all, they left the rest of the clause of the 14th Amendment. They left the rest of it because, you, last I checked, you still have to be an American-born citizen to become president. They, they, that still remains. And you don't need the Supreme, you don't need Congress to talk about it. You don't need Congress to create a law against, uh, for it. And you still have to be over 35 years old. You, they didn't say you have to go to the Congress to make a law on that. That line is there. They made a change to the Constitution. Guys, it is important who you have in office. We have all of these... Mm, let me use the right word. We have all of these bad representations of the Constitution of, the, of SCOTUS. SCOTUS, because Democrats, American citizens, did not participate in voting. And because of that, you have Republicans that have put in these people in office, in the SCOTUS, in the Supreme Court. Your vote is not just for the individual running. Your vote is for the Supreme Court. And the Republicans have that down. They've had this down for 30 years. Right? So, guys, the constitutionalists, they say the constitutionalists did not rule in a constitutionalist way, saying that Congress as to the only way that clause can be adopted or used is that if Congress, by majority, two thirds, makes it so, which is not in the Constitution. Now they just add it to the Constitution. SCOTUS. Oh. Oh. Chrissy, I'm with you. I'm so tired of SCOTUS. And I think most Americans are. They have the lowest, lowest approval rating in history. No one has confidence. Very few people have confidence in the Supreme Court. And that is a problem. Uh, Chrissy said, it feels like they want this drama. Well, 
they don't want we can't put words in their mouth but their behavior says they don't want to go against trump uh yeah it is very clear it is clear that scotus is compromised very much so i love this that's why i love this community you guys are engaged scotus has been compromised and that's what happens when you have a mitch mitch moscow mitch mitch mcconnell who denied Obama his um, SCOTUS pick and then gave an extra pick to Trump. Three. We got three justices under Trump. That changes the courts forever. Unless, unless Democrats start pushing the idea, let's change SCOTUS. Here's an idea I will throw out into the picture. Maybe the Democrats should be running on, not only are we for women's rights, women's health care, women's having the control of their bodies. We are also going to get rid of SCOTUS the way we know it today. We're going to add more justices to make the field even. I think the Democrats should run with that. I think a lot of people in this country will go for it. I think a lot of people will go for adding more people onto the Supreme Court, like other countries have. Most countries have 12 justices. Others have 30, 30 justices. And then that way you can't have this political craziness like America. We love crazy in this country. I think it's a great idea. I think that should be a campaign. Let's change SCOTUS for the country. Let's run on it. Is anybody with me? Does that sound like a good idea? I know it's been floated, but people are afraid. Why? Democrats need to be more aggressive. Democrats need, and let me tell you, the Republicans are going to do something. I'm sure they will. If they ever have the majority, I will say, Democrats need to say, we need the Supreme, this is a good way to get the Senate filled with Democrats. It's a very, you know, it's a little shifty there. The Senate can go to the Republicans very easy. It's a very slim, what they call it, slim line majority. In Congress, in the uh, in the Republican, sorry, the House of Representatives. I'm just saying, here we go. Chris says the idea has been floated to increase the number on the bench, but nothing has been done about it yet. I think it needs to be done. Yeah, uh, Lisa says aggressiveness is not our forte. It's not our forte. Democrats, get it together. I'm neither Democrat or Republican, but I tell you one thing, Eileen, because the Republican Party has left us all. It's, we can't even, we, we need a healthy Republican Party, but we don't have a Republican Party. We have a cult party. It's called the Trump Party. Okay, what else are you guys seeing here? Let me see what else is in here. Okay, okay, there we go. I got all, I got it all. That's right, Lisa said it there. If Trump gets elected, guess what? He'll have more picks. Clarence Thomas could die. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Anyone could die. Clarence Thomas is the senior member of the of the of the SCOTUS. He's the oldest. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the next news news today. Um. Okay. There we go. Uh, for those that dismissed it, um, yesterday I didn't get a chance to talk about it, but yesterday uh, that happened on Friday is that when the, um, Trump was on the border and um, and Biden was on the border, Biden said something I thought was gutsy. Biden said, "You know what? I'm gonna I, I'm gonna call your your bluffs." He says, "Trump, I'll work with you. Sign this bill." Tell your folks to sign this bill, this bipartisan border deal. Let's get it done. 
But we all know that the Democrats want some help there and the Republicans don't. Notice every election year is the only time you hear about the border. It's like clockwork. You don't hear about it all for three years. For three years, you don't hear nothing about the border. It's the year of election year that you hear all about the border. It's the same cycle, the same program, the same game plan every year for the last 40 years. We need to get with the program. That's right. Call their bluffs. And Biden did it. Say, hey, you, you, you're down here on the border and you're screaming about we're not doing our jobs. Well, here's the bill. The bill's here. We, the, the Republicans put the bill together. We, uh, the Democrats, went with the Republicans so that the bills can get done. And Trump stopped it because he wants to run on it. Goes to show you, who cares? They don't really care about the country. They don't care about the country. Uh, Janice says, think there was a time when there was more people on the uh, Supreme Court. Don't overlook the lower courts have been packed with 45s as, uh, yep, as well. Yep. Yep. Um, that is the legacy of McConnell. McConnell put hundreds and hundreds of Supreme, uh, sorry, federal court justices who have lifetime sentences as well. So I say sentences, lifetime appointments as well on the local courts. It's important, guys, that we vote. Okay. Um, there we go. There we go. Good. Hey, Derek Tuggle. Yeah, Mr. Tuggle is in the building. Mr. TT is in the building. Why? <laughs> Oh, God. First of all, they still listen to him. Why? Where is the wall he was building? The clown. Yes. So, guys, we got to we gotta encourage our families to vote, our friends to vote, our neighbors to vote. We got to encourage them to vote and not vote for de Republicans. Vote Democrat. Vote Democrat all the way down the ticket, the ballot. Uh, what else is on the news? Um, there's something I wanted to bring to your attention before we go into our, today's topic is also, we're going to be teaching about taking photos, but, uh, Tuesday tips, but there was one story that I came across and I had to share it with you. Um, uh, let me just see if I, I got this all queued in and, um, I promise I won't, I don't want to get knocked off by the YouTube, uh, principalities. <laughs> So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this quick so that way you can see it quickly. I'm not gonna stay on it long, but I just want you to see this headline and I want you to see the article. Um, this article I think is very important. Uh, uh, photographer, let me get here. Hold on, let's put it up here. Oops, I just canceled my own thing that I was trying to do. There we go. Let's try it again. Here we go. And here we go, share. Okay, so this is an article, um, photo article. Let me just pop in there. And uh, photography from Haiti and, and the crisis, the gang crisis that's going on in Haiti. 80% uh, of, the, uh, of, the, of the country's um, uh, leadership is in, uh, is 80% is of the, uh, what do you call it? The leadership in Haiti is by gang members. And uh, so this amazing photographer from New York, uh, um, Gills Clark, Gills Clark does an amazing uh, photojournalist story on this on CNN. So check out this article. Uh, it is worth reading. I still don't understand how this could be. I'm going to click this off real quick so that way I don't get in trouble. Um, but the photographer is um, photographer, photojournalist Gills Clark on Haiti's gangs. And he does an amazing photographic um, journey of it. Uh, I was trying to get to his Instagram page this morning, but unfortunately Instagram is down. So could not get there to show you his page. Um, but definitely check it out. It is uh, also, let me give you the link, uh, the, well, the title again of this article is called As Haiti is Consumed by Violence. A gang leader calls for liberation, uh, CNN, and also 
that is the um the link to it uh you know what? maybe sometimes I, I need to work on some of these links so, but this link is there for you guys to look it up it is worth the read one of the things I don't understand, and maybe you can help me out. You guys are here. You guys are thinkers and political-minded folks. I still don't understand. How is it possible that Haiti is right near America? Like, it's in the Western Hemisphere. It's in the Western Hemisphere. It is part of the Caribbean islands. It is right on our doorstep. And how is it possible that America has no invested, uh, what do you want to call it? No investing in, in that country. I mean, it, it's kind of, it's disturbing to me that we are worried about things going on in uh, like Israel and all the other places in the world where in our hemisphere, in our hemisphere, offshore, from America is a crisis, a crisis where people are living in the streets, people are dying every day, the gang violence is out of control, and no, and they are pleading with the United Nations for help, pleading, pleading, and they can't get help. It's crazy. I don't understand that. I still, what is it to gain that Haiti is in chaos? Why has an America, and then they say, why are these Haitians coming to America? Well, there's gang violence in the streets to the capital, from the capital out. People are living in tents and on the street in Haiti. They cannot. It, the whole country is in turmoil. There are gangs fighting against gangs. And yet America sits on the sidelines. I don't know what, how, how is this possible? How is this possible in 2024 when America is worried about everybody else? And yet our Haitian brothers and sisters are down right under, right near, our, not too far off the coast of, of Florida. And their country is in chaos. And it's been that way for years, for years, decades. And we have an invested interest. We should. What? Because they don't have gold, but they do have an they do have an element. I forgot the name of the element. Someone help me out if you've been following Haiti. That I I've read and I've heard about it. That America is there in Haiti. But they're mining. This particular element, I don't, I forget the name of it. Yeah. Someone may know that name of that element that's in Haiti. And it's, I do believe it's one of the only places on earth that this particular element is found. And it, they believe it came from a meteor. You may know. You can look it up on Google. Famous mineral... Me, I could do that, but I'm talking to you. But all my little Google, the Google lords out there, click away, click away. Um, Janet says, heard on Sunday is just heard on Sunday. It's so dangerous. Eight organizations are staying away. Food packed and sent from USA was stolen by gangs en route to intended destinations in countryside. Yes, it's horrible. It's horrible. And with the vibranium, thank you, Lisa. Vibranium. And there is this theory. Now, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't believe in all that crap. However, 
Oh, Jamaica has it also. Vibranium. And it is, I don't know what it's supposed to be able to do, but it's supposed to be just as important as uranium to technology or some type of technology, technological advancements. Some, I don't know what it is, but I, I, I just know. We have to look it up. Homework, homework for all of us. Find out what's vibranium and what it's used for. Computer, what is vibranium used for? Vibranium is a fictional metal featured in Marvel Comics. It is capable of absorbing, storing, and releasing large amounts of kinetic energy. It is noted for its extraordinary properties and has been characterized as a super metal. The metal oh. has been used to create various items, including the suit of the superhero Captain Marvel and the shield of the superhero Iron Man. Okay, so vibranium is not a real thing. So it's another, it's another, it's another one. It's not vibranium because that's in that's in a, that's the Marvel. <laughs> that's from the movie. That's from a, <laughs> that's from the Marvel comics. Vibranium, but it, there, yeah, there's there's uh, no vibranium is fictional from Wakanda. Yeah, but there is. You were laughing. I was like, you, see you, Lisa. No, it's not uranium, but there is a uh, there is this element that's there that came from a mineral that came from a me the meteors that you know back in the old days. I can't remember what the name of is it. This is it box box it box box boxite. I think it's boxite. So, okay, someone help me out. Okay, the computer said, "Wait a minute, that's a fictional <laughs> fictional vibranium." <laughs> Oh yeah, I got me in trouble. Almost get me in trouble here getting on false information online here. <laughs> we can't have any false information. <laughs> Lisa says, I'm laughing so hard my stomach hurts. <laughs> I, that was good. Lisa, you had me. Lisa, you had me. I know you were being sarcastic. Yes, you were. <laughs> My brainy was from Black Panther. Oh gosh. Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, we're going to find out what that I do believe that like, um, Chris says is bauxite. I do believe. And uh, computer, what is bauxite? Bauxite is a sedimentary rock with a high aluminum content. It is the primary source of aluminum and gallium in the world. Thank you. Yeah, so that has aluminum, uh, um, this uh, base mineral. Yeah, it's okay. So we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Uh, Chris says that's what they make aluminum foil out of. Okay, okay. Well, there is rumor that whatever this stone is, that's very unique to Haiti and to, I guess, now Jamaica, um, that they um, they are mining it in secret in the mountains while the war is a distraction. So I don't know what's going on in Haiti. I just know it's wrong because the people are suffering. And, and then we got our crazy Americans that are like, why do they come to our country? Well, maybe if we help them in their country, they wouldn't be coming to our country. You know, a great way to solve the immigration crisis like we used to do is we support other countries, like the poor countries, meaning the countries that don't have oil as a reason to support them, right? It would be a good idea to help Haiti. It would be a good idea if the United Nations put together a UN force and went into the country and took over the government and built a new government. So that they could thrive. I don't understand the hate. Well, yes, we do understand why. I mean, obviously. The obviously, I mean, they're a black country. They're a country of people of color. But definitely, I almost want to say, I'm cynical in this way. I'm cynical. This is a cynical statement. This has nothing to do with facts. I'm going to say this. It's just my own theory. Could I could I put a note in that? Could I put a pin in that? 
This is just my theory. I don't think the world or the Western world has ever forgiven Haiti for their uprising. Do you know it was the Haitians? They were the first to rise up against their masters, causing an outbreak across the Caribbean and in the United States for people to rise up against their masters, the slaves. I don't think they've ever been forgiven for it. I still think these Western countries still harbor some kind of way about it. But just my thinking, I have read that though. I've read this, but I don't know. I just think it's possibly true. I mean, you're concerned about other countries, but why not Haiti? They've had several massive earthquakes. That's another reason to help them. I don't know. Just saying. Um, Lisa, uh, Janet says, USA has a history of ignoring its southern foreign neighbors. Remember. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Oops, let me look. It's very true. Very, very true. And so this is a story that I think you guys can look at. Uh, read about it. Read the story. Follow it. Get to know the story. And I, I, I hope that we can one day have um, Gil's clock on here to share. Maybe I'm hoping that he sees this and he comes on board and we can kind of like have him talk about that here. He's a New York photographer, so you know I'm going to reach out to him and uh, see what we can do there. Maybe hopefully he can come on. Uh, but this is an interesting story. And his photography is superb. It is worth going to see. Again, I'll show it just quickly. I don't want to get into trouble with, but definitely go through it. Look at the photos. It is worth going through and seeing and reading the story. It is definitely worth your time. Okay. It is worth your time. Uh, Chrissy, you going to really didn't know, didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, in, interesting how America picks and chooses how who to help. It's right because it, it really does. It's not about poverty. It's always about how can that country, you know. It's all about it's always the dollar. It's always the dollar. The dollar, yes, it will help us. The dollar is always what motivates this country. Uh, and Paula says, first independent country in the free Western world, and why are they still paying for it? Haiti, yes, Haiti. This is, I mean, you would think this would be in the news, right? Gang warfare, people dying in the streets. Okay, I think I, I talked about it enough, right? I gotta move on, right? Gotta move on. But I just wanna bring that to your attention. Keep it in your, keep it as something to, to look at. Again, read the article in CNN, uh, it is worth it. I had a, it was a good read for me. So today is Tip Tuesday, capturing your best angle. So we're, we're going to talk about that. And this is an easy, this is an easy Tip Tuesday topic. And um, it's the reason why, first of all, last, last night I, I finally did my laundry. <laughs> I, I mean, my laundry's been piling up like snow on a, a, in a blizzard. And, um, and I finally got my um, laundry done. But while I was in the laundry room and I was talking to my neighbor, and she was telling me about her daughter, and her daughter now loves photos. And you know, she's you know, she gets excited when she sees me with you know, because you know, I'm a photographer. And so she grabbed her, her her um her cell phone, and she showed me all her photos of her daughter. And the daughter was posing and giving her size. And, and then she said to she, her daughter was like, "Mommy, no, that not that side. This is my better side." And I said, "Who taught her that?" I was like. Did you teach her that? He, she's like, yeah, I'm. A, I kind of like taught her that. She said, she, your daughter, as I think she's like six years old, maybe five years old. She knows her better side. She knows when she takes a photo, to take a picture from her better side. It's. I found it very amusing that a five year old understood that she has a better side for photography. 
when taking her photo, which we all do. We all have a better side. So <laughs> we, you know, we talk about, you know, photographer, you always see, mo like, I I, what I love about photographing models, like seasoned models or people in media, uh, some of my clients who are in plays and uh, work on Broadway or off-Broadway shows, they know their side. They know their side. They're like, oh, no, Rod, you can't shoot from that angle. Oh, no, 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 that's not the side. Usually, I'm, usually amused, but I know that's that's how people like to take pictures. They want to know. They want you to know their best side. So I put this as a topic. Obviously, I put this on, on a topic in the coming, you know, notification coming what's happening on YouTube weeks ago, about two weeks ago, I picked this topic for today. But it was so funny that I was in the laundry room having this conversation yesterday to kind of like just, I guess it was like a reiteration that, that it needed to be talked about. And so today we're going to talk about that. So here we go. Let's go with tip number one. Tip number one. First of all, this is a, we like to call this a hack. So this is a hack on finding your best side. And for all of us, we have smartphones to help us. We have smartphones to help us find our better side. So number one, step one, hold your smartphone in your left hand at eye level. Look into the camera. Give it a nice look. And from the left side of your face, strike a pose and snap a selfie. I would say in different light, right? By the window, have the beautiful light coming in. Do it by the, the light. Find a light by the, like a, a light fixture of some light source and do it with incandescent light. Find another light, LED light, but find a light source. Many life photos. So you may want to take many photos, but step one, take your left hand, take your camera, your smartphone, and use your smartphone. Line it up. Line it up with your eyes. Go into it. Give it a good, sexy look and snap the button. Then, it's going to be easy, guys. It's an easy, it's an easy tip to say. Then, switch it up. Then switch hands and repeat the process from the right side using your right hand and pose and capture your selfie. Right? So you did it with the left, pose. Do it with the right, pose. Oh, should we do it this way? Pose, pose, right? Left and right. And then step three. Review and compare both photos. You'll discover your favorite side of your face. Like professional actors, models, you too will know your best side. So guys, that's a quick, that was an easy tip for today. Quick and easy. Capture your best angle. Any questions? Any questions? Is it Q&A time? That's a little, that was an easy Easy, breezy, breezy. Tip Tuesday. Tip Tuesday. I know we went through a lot of politics. We went through a lot. Of, that was all necessary stuff. But Q&A. On the subject of capturing your best angle. Let's see what you got to say. Let's see what says you. Um... <laughs> okay, there we go. Lisa's saying something crazy, so I'm not going to post that one. <laughs> I'm not posting that one, Lisa. Oh, uh, yeah, my twin, though. I was on one. Okay, okay, there you go. Okay, so I see Amparo and Lisa. I have a really interesting conversation <laughs> about the laundry. But, guys, does that make sense? How many of you know your better side? I'm curious. I am curious, since no one has that question or answer, what is your best angle? What side? What side? Left or right? 
put it in the comment box. I'm curious. I'll know for the future when I'm taking pictures of you, if I happen to come across you. Yeah. Uh, she says, uh, Lisa, for me, holding the phone up a little is best also. Yep. But definitely go left, go right, and you will find your favorite shot. Good morning, Dr. Tachi. So anyone, any left siders, right siders? Who like for me, I, I do believe my right side is my favorite. My right side. But what about you? Left or right? Right or left? Lisa says she's mostly right. Okay. Your best angle to take photos. Your best angle to take photos. What is it? Okay. Mostly must be working. Mostly are working because you're not commenting. <laughs> Okay, so that's it. That's it for the topics. That's it for today. Um, let me give you a couple of announcements so that way we can chill out. But again, read those articles on Haiti. That's important. I think that's a really important subject. And um, but yeah, so also just so you know, this week coming up, uh, sorry, this uh, sorry, in two weeks, our first Thursday, third Thursday of this month, we will have our Patreon community meetup. I should say not meetup, but We'll be getting together on our Patreon page talking about ISO. Uh, ISO. Also, just so you know, if you want, let me just get, show you this. If you're interested, the Patreon community, you guys have an uh, the article. So you go to the um, Patreon page. It's really laid out in more de in depth, a little bit more on the capture your your best angles. So that's on the Patreon community. So that's there for you guys. And um, also yesterday's um, um, Motivation Monday is also broken down. Uh, the thought of yesterday's um, Be Delivered in Your Journey is on um, the Patreon community. So check those things out. If you're in the Patreon community, check it out. It's there for you. If you're not in the Patreon community, join the Patreon community. That's how you support me as an artist and photographer and creative. Also, for Saturday of the month, we will be in Soho. For all those folks that want to hang out with photographers, you love photography, you want to hang out with photographers, we are meeting on the fourth Saturday of the month in Soho. And we're meeting where other photographers usually hang out, where we like to call them the high steppers of Manhattan walkthrough in Soho. We'll be hanging out in that area. However, it is near galleries, so in case it rains. If it rains, we'll be more in galleries. If it's sunny, cloudy, Beautiful day, no precipitation. We will be in the streets photographing people, models. That particular corner will be. I can't, I won't, you just have to go to the page to tell so you can look it up. We will be there. So um, that would be on Broadway, but we'll be in Soho and we will be photographing people and doing street photography. So if you're not a member of the RLP photography um, group, you can do that as well. I do that every fourth Saturday of the month. And we get together, uh, except for the January and February, then we get together in museums. Uh, Ron, talk about how post I sent you, how they stole that. Oh, we need to talk. That's a, you know what? I'm going to put a pin on that one, Lisa, for tomorrow. Ah, yeah, that one is a good one. Um, ooh, yes, that's tomorrow, my dear. We'll put that one for tomorrow. Um, let's see. So we got that. And on the Fifth Saturday of this month. We have a fifth Saturday in March. So what? guess what? Well, I've decided that every fifth Saturday, we are going to do a meetup for our Touch Base Daily community. So if you are in New York City, if you are in New York City at 2 o'clock on the fifth Saturday of March, the Touch Base Daily com um, community will be meeting at MoMA. Yeah, we are first, uh, our second event of the, since we've had our Touch Base Daily co uh, community, we'll be meeting at MoMA. And then after we will get, get, get together for some drinks and hang out. Okay, so that's at two o'clock at MoMA on the fifth Saturday of this month. That is March 30th, March 30th. So we will be gathering together as a touch base daily community. So do that. Put it on your calendar. 
put it on your calendar. So we got three things that, you, uh, that should be on the calendar. Patreon, Basic Photography 101, RLP Urban Photographers Meetup on the fourth Saturday, and Touch Base Daily Meetup. We do have a Touch Base Daily Meetup page. If you go to Meetup and click on Touch Base Daily, you can sign up for that. Okay, I think we're good. I think we're good. Any anything any any last minute convers comments or conversations, daughters? Well, uh, Lisa did say we should look at uh, the the family. Talk about the past, you know, how they stole the family's land and uh, build uh, to build the Dulles Airport, which was incredible. Uh, we're going to talk about that. That was uh, that's a good subject. So we'll do that tomorrow. And um, but that is on the docket for tomorrow. Thank you for um, indulging in our Tip Tuesday, capturing your best angles. I hope that helps somebody today. I hope it helped you. And um, and I hope is is YouTube uh, is uh, Instagram back up? Is it back up? Yes, Instagram is back up. Instagram is back up. Facebook is back online all those folks but i'm so glad i have this platform because yeah instagram was down oh who knew instagram is back up and um okay so there we go and guys check out also go to instagram and check out um gill's um page as well check that out and i will put the links in there uh, and in the description okay guys i'll see you tomorrow Take care. I love you all. And later.